Good morning. Welcome to worship on this wonderful and yet again brisk Sunday morning. Uh, Quinn and I are particularly excited to be here because the heat was out at first service. So we are really excited to be someplace warm. Don't worry, they were filling the tank as we were as we were leaving. So annual meeting at St. Andrews next week will be just fine. Uh, and today we have our annual meeting today. So before we talk business and look back on the past year fondly and plan for the next year with enthusiasm, we give thanks to a God who is faithful and loving and constant. With that, we turn to our hymn of the day, 588, because as it turns out, there is not just one version of There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy, there's two, but we only know 588, so please join us for him. 588, There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy, will stand during the closing verse. Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another.
God our rock and refuge. We pour out our hearts before you. We have known you but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us, that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come here. By the authority of Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We turn to our Kyrie from setting free. <clears throat> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we turn to God's word. The first reading is from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, <coughs> saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh will be, shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned their turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring to, upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll read Psalm 62 responsibly. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. And God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people, pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low rate, of low estate, cannot be trusted. Place on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in exhortation, in robbery, take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your hearts upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. The power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. <coughs> the second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the point of time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the assembly to please rise as we turn to our gospel acclamation. <clears throat> first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. <clears throat> and immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat, the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <laughs> Early uh, in the summer, when my girls were still attending daycare, they came home and said, Mom, when can we do a yes day? 
Uh, now, those of you who watch Netflix or TV might be familiar with the name of the movie Yesterday. So I've not seen it. So either these parents is, a, is about a family, from what I understand. So either the pa parents are just really busy or they're very strict, but somehow they the parents have to say yes to everything. Um, I felt a little threatened because part of me wanted to say, well, if you said yes to everything I did, then maybe I could say yes. But that's not the point. <laughs> that's not the point. There is a Yes Day movie. And I confess, even though I still haven't seen it, I think about that a lot. The idea is so alluring to be able to say yes to everything. We think it'll make us more fun, more adventurous, something that we are not. And it seems, and maybe this is just because when I used to work in an office space, um, I didn't like watching the movie The Office, uh, the, off the one where the gentleman he goes to the counselor at the very beginning and he's like, every day is the worst day of my life. It felt too real because I also worked in a monotonous office space. So it wasn't funny because I was like, I feel like I'm watching my work day play out again. And it's not funny. It hurts. It hurts. It's painful. A yes day for someone who has ADD or ADHD. I'm like, I already feel like I say yes. In fact, I have to pay someone to teach me how to say no. <laughs> every day already feels like a yes day. And I could go an entire day without talking to anyone, except myself in my head. And I'd come with all these ideas, and I'll say, yes, 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 yes. But at some point, whether you have ADHD or not, whether you're just a normal human being, we have to learn how to say no. We often are taught to say no because we get overwhelmed, or we burn out, we overcommit, and then we have to back out of things. I don't know if it's because we're people pleasers. Maybe we all have a little bit of rejection sensitivity disorder where we're afraid that if we say no to something, people will not like us. People will outcast us. Maybe we're afraid that we'll miss out on something awesome if we say no to the wrong thing. But we cannot say yes to everything. And if I've learned anything in this past year while learning how to say no, it's not just the unfun things we have to learn to say no to. It's the fun things that we have to learn to say no to. Not because we are particularly terrible people or we need to be punished, although Lutheranism, sometimes we can end up going in that direction. We need to learn how to say no to things so we can say yes when God calls us. The creators for today's content on Sundays and Seasons had a great like food for thought brain teaser. They mentioned how on uh, those little desk calendars, you rip off a page and there's a quote or a saying. One of them came across a quote and said, decide what you want and what you are willing to exchange for it. Set your priorities and go to work. Let me say that again. Decide what you want and what you are willing to exchange for it. Set your priorities and go to work. For someone who wants to say yes to everything, that statement makes me feel overwhelmed and terrified the same way repent makes most people terrified. No, no one has, no one has come across this one? Mm-hmm. What makes you more scared? Decide what you want and trade off for it or repent? You're a pastor's kid. You're going you're to say Jesus. <laughs> no. Decide what you want and what you're willing to exchange for it. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Which of those statements makes us a little more anxious than the other? That one. That one? Repent, the kingdom has come near? Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who would probably agree with that. How do we even know where to begin to decide what we want? How do we even begin to know what we want? How do we begin to know what we're willing to exchange for it? How do we know what God is calling us? We have this thing in the church world that we talk about, and it's called discernment. It's the act of continually listening to God and deciding where we're going to go. Maybe you need to go to the nursery. There we go. Repentance is hearing the call and turning away from the things that draw us away from God. And like discernment, repentance is a never-ending process. What do you want? 
What are you willing to exchange for it? Oh, don't ask me that. I want to say yes to everything. I want to do it all. That's why I have multiple cupboards, multiple closets, a couple of rooms in my house that house all the crafting things that I was going to do that I've never done. What do I want? I want to do it all. I don't want to exchange things. I just want to be able to do it all. But there's not enough caffeine in the world to accomplish it. And nothing hurts more than realizing you are mortal and you don't have enough energy to do it all. And there's not enough hours in the day. The most unfair thing about listening to Runa read is she reads the Magic Treehouse books and Jack and Annie get to explore wherever they want and they come back and no time has passed at all. I'm like, how do these kids that how do these kids not sleep? All day long. <clears throat> they go on these awesome adventures doing things that no eight-year-old kid should be able to do, filling responsibilities way beyond what we would ask an eight-year-old to do. And then they come home and they're like, okay, oh, I'm home now, time for dinner. Now let's go play basketball, let's go play kickball, and let's go on a family vacation. Oh, is that when we learn? Is that how we learn to imagine that we're able to do more than we really are able to? Maybe some of us read our books a little too literally. So let's focus on a different book, okay? Saying yes to things and saying no to things. Everyone encounters this quandary, and you are not alone in it. Jonah. Jonah is called to do something, and he says, hard no, hard pass, absolutely not. And he goes the other direction. Paul, from our Corinthians, is saying no to little things. So you can say yes to the big things. He's saying that there are serious consequences if you say yes or no. Well, then that terrifies us. Um, so then we get to the gospel. Jesus is calling disciples, saying no. Do not live into this profession that you've been raised into your whole life. Maybe you're really, really good at it. No, say no to this. Come and follow me. This puts us in a really strange position. Because most of us are not like Jonah. Most of us are not willing to flee to a completely different physical location to avoid God's call in our life. Some of you, maybe. Most of us. We're just willing to wait it out. We're just willing to just live in the maybe of it all. On the other side, most of us are not willing to just jump out of a literal boat at the drop of a hat because Jesus says, follow me. And if these are the only two examples that we have, either running away from God's call in your life or running directly to it, then how do we who live in the maybe identify? Because most of us live in between. We're neither running away from God, but neither are we running towards God. We're somewhere in between. It's more like we're choosing to not choose. It's a slower, it's a more ambiguous way of saying no. But also it could be a slower, more ambiguous way of saying yes. Maybe I'm just going to wait it out. My question for us today then is... What are we running away from? Or what are we running towards? How do we say no to things so we can say yes to God? I have, I have an entire shelf of high heels, and they're not practical high heels either. They are skinny, itty bitty heels, way taller than any heel I need. I haven't worn, I didn't even wear heels before my children were born, guys, and now I have mom knees. So I definitely don't wear them now. I don't have time for a broken ankle where my knee gives out on me. Why do I have an entire shelf of fancy patent leather heels? If I don't have any outfits to go with, it's because I'm holding on to the me I want it to be. I don't know where I came across this. There was an article about women who race in Boston on those like cobblestone streets. And whoever wins the, the spring is like, I don't know, $10,000 spending spree at Fashion Week. And I was like, somewhere in my early 20s, I was like, that's the epitome of being a woman. Yeah, I can sprint stiletto heels. Ain't nothing getting me. <laughs> I can do it all. <laughs> I mean, the 13-year-old the, uh, version of me thought that was making a three-layer meringue pie. And then I married somebody who doesn't like pie. And I was like, well, now I, gotta, now I have to have a whole new paradigm shift. 
If, if making pie is not going to be how I secure my legendary status in life, i got to learn how to run in heels. So now I've lugged them all over the place. I move them. I rearrange them because it's a fantasy version of myself that I will never become. Because somewhere I feel like I'm pleasing someone else or filling into someone else's version of strength or femininity, whatever it is. We all have that. We all have some version of that, the ideal version we want to be. That's why some of us, some of us collect all the different kinds of Bibles, because like having a different colored Bible and different translations is going to make me pick it up and read it more. That's why we have so many things, so many crutches, right? You don't need me to externally process all my baggage. I will, but you don't need that today. We want to be this ideal version of ourselves. That's what we want to say yes to. And we say to no to everything else. But then we can't actually live into that. So what are we willing to say no to? Even the things we desperately wanted. So we can say yes to what God wants us to do. What God is calling us to do. And I don't think we miss out on nearly as many things as we are afraid we're going to miss out on when we say no. And I don't think we offend nearly as many people as we are afraid we are going to offend if we say, I can't. Do you know the thing that made me the most anxious in my early 20s? So if you know an early 20-year-old out in the workforce, like maybe just like ask them first and then give them a pat on the shoulder. It was saying, no, I'm tired. No, I can't do that. I'm tired. So it's like, no, I'll just pound a couple, I'll drink a couple cans of Coke. I will form a coffee addiction, even though I don't like the taste or the smell of it. Jonah said no, and God stuck with him. The disciples said yes, and God ran with them. We say maybe, and the Holy Spirit just keeps nudging us. Say no to some things. Say no to the things that take you away from God. <clears throat> Say no to the distractions that we fill up our calendars with. And here's why. Because when we say yes to what God is calling us to, I think we are more flabbergasted and surprised than we could ever imagine. You know Jonah, Nineveh repents, right? And Jonah goes and helps. And God stays faithful to Jonah too. What's the worst that can happen? That God actually accomplishes what God promises to accomplish. And we realize that it was never about us. And it was always about God. Well, God will give us a little bit of time to pout. And then he'll call us to keep loving people in the world. And serving one another. There are so many things in this world that we could say yes to. And there's so many things, hard things and fun things, that we need to say no to. So blessings upon you because I wish there was an easier cheat sheet to know what it is. To know what it is that God is calling each and every one of you to so I can show up for you every single day with a sign that says, you're going to do it. This is as close as I can get you to a cheat sheet. Love yourself as God loves you. Be gracious and merciful to yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not cling to the grudges. Do not have expectations for people that they cannot fulfill. Do not demand things of people that they cannot give you. Turn everything over to God, for he is your rock, your foundation, and the one who will carry you through this life into eternity. And for that, we are thankful that we get to say yes. Yes, this is the God who loves you. And thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you, as you are able, to sing with us our hymn of the day, number 661. I'd love to tell the story.
continues as we profess the story using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our oh, sorry, go for it. God, our hope and refuge. You placed the fish in the sea, guide our care of oceans and all creations that live in them, 
hold us accountable for actions that endanger water resources and the people who depend on them. God of grace. We receive our prayer. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God who cares for the suffering, care for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, those living up in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us and this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you who welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in you and your salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to please share a sign of Christ's peace with those who are around you with a handshake or a peace sign. Peace be with you, those worshiping with us from home. receive what we seek and follow your son Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places Offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thank you. 
giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and the wearing Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, and the benefit of all, and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Can you say amen, Finn? Amen. We would like to invite you all to please stay for food um, and fellowship before our annual meeting begins, which is always a fun time. Um, there's lots of pictures to go around, so we'll get to send them all around. Yeah, I know. Isn't that wild? You'll get you a Britney Spears mic someday, too, for when you're assisting minister. Um, but please do join us for food and fellowship. Should we bless these? Should we bless these guys? Yeah? Raise your hand. You guys may bless him back, too. So we can all raise hands. There we go. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Please join us in singing our sending hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of Light, in number 815. Yeah.